name is Andrew Human. For my whole career, first as a designer, grasshopper nerd, then as a researcher, and now as a software engineer, I've been obsessed with one question. What is the right kind of automation and intelligence for architectural design software? How can automation support designers in a way that's practical and powerful without being disruptive? Over the last six years at Hypar, we've done a lot of thinking, experimenting, and building out answers to this question. We've learned a lot along the way, and we've also been wrong a lot. From the beginning, Hypar's vision has been to be the best possible place to design buildings. And we set out to achieve that by deeply integrating designers' own expertise directly into the product. We recognized early on that the industry was overflowing with knowledge, experience, and know-how in the form of Grasshopper and Dynamo scripts, historical projects, spreadsheets, and content libraries. And we wanted to find a way to make that knowledge shareable and easily accessible in the design environment. The early versions of that worked something like this. Anyone could upload a C-sharp or Grasshopper script or an Excel spreadsheet and publish it to Hypar as a function, and then connect together these functions to generate whole building designs. Our users built out super sophisticated automation tools for everything from generative space layout to structural analysis to the automated modeling of complex drainage and piping systems. But all this power came with a ton of complexity. Computational designers love building tools on Hypar, but their users were often overwhelmed and confused by the interface. There were a million sliders and tables and panels and buttons, but the biggest problem was that it was automation first, design experience second. So a year and a half ago, we built a new designer first front end on top of the same platform. In this world, you don't have to select and add a space generating function or try to manipulate 20 different sliders. You can just click the add space button and add a space. In this new world, we definitely haven't given up on the power of automation. We've just found new ways to incorporate it. A lot of the automation in Hypar doesn't even look like automation per se. It's so small you might not even notice it. It takes the form of subtle integral affordances, which are there to speed up the annoying, time-consuming steps of the process. When you upload a program requirement spreadsheet, Hypar automatically analyzes your column structure, so you don't have to reformat it to bring it in. You can then insert those requirements as spaces and quickly rearrange them. Resizing those spaces even preserves their areas, so you can easily reshape them without a calculator on hand to check area compliance. Early tests showed users were wasting a lot of time fiddling with repetitive copy operations, so we built intuitive copy and array tools, which hide a surprising amount of power. You can make a single copy of an object or drag out an array, which automatically figures out the pattern underlying your selection, so it can extend or expand on that pattern. Our dimension controls recognize from your selection which dimensions are meant to be equivalent, so you can interactively adjust the spacing of a linear or grid-like arrangement. This works without having used any special array or grid tools to create the arrangement. We just detect these conditions automatically and provide you with useful contextual manipulation tools. Automation isn't always about changes to the design or the model. I know firsthand from my time working in firms that a huge amount of time and effort gets spent on deliverable production, making diagrams and presentation graphics for conversations with clients. I can't count the hours I spent as a junior architect and illustrator in InDesign tweaking layers and line weights. Hypar's diagram mode makes it easy to present something conceptual to a client, stripping away details so they don't get distracted. We're also about to release this exploded axon tool, which makes explaining 3D blocking and stacking super easy. And a nicely formatted PDF with a customizable title block is always just a few clicks away. We also just launched clearance elements, which continuously detect and warn you when clashes occur. I think it's a great example of how we're striving to capture expertise directly in the platform through ongoing analysis. An experienced planner can set up room standards with clearances, and a junior designer can apply them in a project safe in the knowledge that they'll be warned if they violate the rules. There's always a desire to make automation smarter, to make it take more action on the user's behalf, but as intelligence increases, so does the likelihood of invalid or useless output. So we found it's important to build in smarts in a way that still leaves the user in the driver's seat, able to easily ignore, dismiss, or fix the results of any automatic design choice. So we've started to take a new approach that we're really excited about. Hypar pays attention to what you're doing and offers contextual suggestions for direct changes or additions to the design. If you make a space called exam room, Hypar proposes reasonable equipment and furniture for you to insert with a single click. Once it's in, you're free to adjust it manually. And the next time you select an exam room, Hypar will remember your design choices and propose your modified design. These suggestions are adaptive. 
If you put a specific type of chair and desk in an open office space, Hypebar will suggest ways to continue what you've started, expanding that layout with the content you've chosen. We're also working on suggestions for more kinds of situations. If you're massing up a building and go to add a grid line, Hypebar can suggest a structural grid. If you add a stair or elevator, Hypebar can estimate how many your project needs and suggest a default arrangement. If you've imported your program, we can even take a stab at laying out spaces. Although, as today's presenters know better than most, this is a hard problem. One size definitely does not fit all when it comes to automated space layout. So I want to point out that these suggestions are powered by the same function infrastructure that Hypebar has had since day one. So soon, anyone will be able to author and share new suggestion sources, new generative logic which designers on your team can use to automatically deploy your layout strategies or standards. Our team knows that we're not going to become the leading experts in every project typology and building system under the sun. So the only way that Hypar can continue to support intelligent automation at the scale of our complex industry is by opening up the platform to custom rules and logic that anybody can build and share to drive new automations, analysis, and layout suggestions. And that's why we're excited to bring back our developer experience. While you're editing your code, maybe logic for a new suggestion like this shelving layout for retail, you can see the results of your changes in Hypebar in real time. So the future of Hypebar will undoubtedly involve some degree of vibe coding for spatial automation. And we can't wait to see what you